Hello, and welcome back to Who's Who at Wonderland. I'm your host, Omar Brown, and my guest today is Christine Riggie. Christine is the Law Library Evening Supervisor at the University at Buffalo. Hello, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure, thank you. Christine, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and the work that you do? Um, well, let's see. Um, I have a bachelor's in communication with a concentration in audio radio and a MLS. Um, currently, I work as the evening supervisor at the law library. Um, right. I've been in this position about almost four years. I really do like it. I love it. I love being in the university you know, aspect of life and the college life. And I like right. being in libraries. It was always my thing. I kind of always wanted to work at a university and especially right. in a library. So um, my main focus is the evening supervisors, obviously supervising the work study students and the rest of the library, ensuring that the patrons are in a safe and comfortable environment. Right. Um, but sometimes, you know, certain things arise where I might need to swoop in and take care of things, but um, that's right. all part of supervising. In right. addition to that, I also um, handle all the course reserve material for the law classes, right. both undergraduate and graduate classes. Right. Um, so that can get pretty time consuming and confusing <laughs> in the beginning right. of the semester. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into putting those out and putting the lib guides out so that students can more um, easily access their materials. We do both print and digital copies if they're available. Um, I also work on extra little projects as needed, um, you know, helping other people uh, digitize audio, radio, or video feeds, things like that. Right, right. Excellent. Um, can you elaborate more on what is a course reserve? Sure. Course reserve is when um, a professor asks to have a book put on hold, I guess you could say, at the right. library. Um, it's usually their textbook, what they're teaching for the class. Okay. Um, it helps out students when they forget their book, or maybe they don't have the money to dish out um, to buy the book right then and there. So right. they can always come to the library. Um, we try to have at least a physical and a digital copy. If not, if no digital copy, then we have two physical copies. Um, right. A lot of them like to take it out. They um, they don't take it out of the library, but they can scan it to themselves or, or you know take notes on a couple of pages or the chapter or whatever they need. So right. it helps even the playing field a little bit. Um, yeah. you, you know, like if if you can't afford a book or something like that, at least at least we have it here especially for the first year law students and all the undergrad students, we have all the books for them. For the two L's and three L's, it's by um, faculty request. So oh, okay. that's a little more hit and miss. But. Right, excellent, excellent. Um, can you, here's the thing. Can you tell me if are there any other organizations that you are part of outside of the UB Law? Yeah. I, um, I'm in Aluni and I'm also in the preservation committee at Winnie Lark. Um, so I really wanted to join the preservation committee because I love old things and I like the idea of keeping things nice and neat and perfect. <laughs> so it seemed right. like a good, a good option. Um, we have a lot of archival material here at the law library right, that right. really needs to be digitized and preserved. And so right. I thought I would learn a lot by joining the preservation committee on how to preserve the maps or find different ways to um, even get the information out there to the public. Something right. that I could use here at work at, at the law library that I learned through Winnie Lark through the preservation committee. Um, so far while I've been there, um, I've helped uh, put together a uh, well, we're going to do a series of brochures, but right. we've got the first brochure out for digitization, um, like photography basics, and we're going to hopefully make that into a series and, and go from there. Right. Um, and we're also working on uh, getting speakers for the Preservation Institute that will be coming up in spring of 2022. Good. So it, it's exciting. It's it's fun to learn about different preservation techniques and things in archival, things like that. So I'm really glad that I'm part of Winnie Lark. Yeah, excellent. That is excellent. 
Well, with all this library experience you have in UB, what attracted you to become a librarian? Hmm. Well, truly, I was having, truthfully, I was having a hard time um, finding a job in my chosen field with my communications degree. Right. And I worked in customs brokerage for years and years and years. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I got to find something else. I got to get out. Right. Um, so I had a friend at the time who was actually going to UB for library. And I was like, what's it like? Do you like it? And she's like, oh, yeah, I love it. You know, I was like, why didn't I ever think of that to be a career? I could do that. I love books and libraries and spent most of my childhood you know, right. reading and, and uh, in libraries. Right. So I was, I applied and I was like, yep, that's what I want to do. I want to work at a library. And then the more I got into the classes, I was like, I want to work at a university. I, I always loved college. Right. Like I want to work. I like the environment. I want to be in a college library. So after a few years, after I graduated, it finally, you know, worked out that I was, I'm here. I'm in a university library, just like I always wanted to be. So oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. And also it was very encouraging too, going back and finding in education and getting something and doing something that you really want to do. Did you right. come it's, it's hard when you're 18 and they tell you to pick a major, you know, right. you don't know until you've been out there for a while. Yeah. Oh, wait, I should have maybe done this, but <laughs> yeah, you know, you live a little, you learn a lot. Oh, so this got final question. Can you tell us something that your colleagues would be shocked to know about you? Um, well, when we first started learning how to read, like back in kindergarten, right. I could read the words, but I couldn't comprehend what it was saying. Right. So like, it would be like the dog goes, the cat goes and they'd be like, okay, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. So I was in the special like reading group in first grade. Right. And one day a light bulb, turned on it just like like the world opened up to me I realized I could finally comprehend what was happening and right. from there it was all I did was read I loved reading books were awesome um, right. when I was in third grade like I read so much that when I was in third grade I started reading the Little House on the Prairie series and those are like right. thick books yeah, you really know not good. the little thin things right like I love classics them. or something like that back in those days okay wow yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was um, like, I don't know. I just, my love of books or whatever really opened up my eyes. Um, so, and I, and then I got really into Little House in the Prairie and I used to like dress up <laughs> in olden day clothes and pretend I was Laura Ingalls Wilder. And right, right. So, I mean, I guess that would be shocking <laughs> in a way. Well, that's good. You really got into the character. I mean, that's a, a great example of like, once you start reading the life of Laura Ingalls, uh, I mean, you started comprehending, you know, the words as you were reading the life and the struggles and the happy times and the good times. And that's, that's real good. That's real good. Well, that concludes our interview for today. I want to thank Christine Riggy for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, that ends the show. I'm Omar Brown, your host of Who's Who at Winnie Lurk. Have a good day. Members of Winnie Lurk are able to utilize a number of programs and services, including archival and digital services, Ask Us 24-7 Chat Reference, Ask the Lawyer, Empire Library Delivery, Hospital Library Services, InfoPass, and a Professional Development. Please visit www.wnylrc.org to learn more.